Alright guys, welcome to another beer review at uh, currently 20 to 3 in the morning. i uh, just come back in from work and I thought, I'm off tomorrow, why don't I have a couple of beers? And I thought I'd start off light with a, a, a modest style. So we're going over to Crooked Stave and we're having a look at the Adam beer. There's the back. Uh, so this is a Dortmunder Sour Alt Beer, aged in bourbon barrels, clocking in at 9.2% ABV. It's actually not that heavy, to be honest. But I tell you what, though, just look at that label. Absolutely wonderful stuff. I need to know who's designed that, because that would just be such a good print. Anyway, enough gushing about the artwork. I even love the bottle cap on this really nicely presented bowl and uh, this is a 375 milliliter bowl which is 12.7 fluid ounces so Adam beers I've had very limited experience with them um, I think the first one that I ever had and I absolutely adored was um, that beer Beavertown did for the Rainbow Project I can't remember who they did a collaboration with but um, their beer was an Adam beer and it's essentially I don't know what this style actually is all I know is it's a it's a German style if the fact that beer is spelled B-I-E-R and it's described as a sour alt beer so I'm not too sure what like a true Adam beer would be but I think I've had maybe one or two since one or two uh, one or since one or since two oh, I've been talking to too many customers today and it's fried my brain a little um and I'm speaking a little bit quiet because it's nearly three o'clock so uh yeah I think I've had like one or two Adam beers but I don't know what like an authentic one would be because I think I had one from Frygeist as well so anyway let's get this open and see what we get I've got this bottle from Brewdog Manchester and uh, they had, oh, can smell from here. Uh, they had a few, uh, well, actually a couple of beers from Crooked Stave. And then I think they had a, a few of the, you know, the big bottles that you could only drink in the, the shop itself. But yeah, I'm not going to lie. Artwork completely sold me on this one. And then when I found out it's an Adam beer, I thought I'm going to buy one. Anyway, so using my uh, overworks glass, love this glass. More breweries should do these sorts of glasses. And uh, look at that, it's already active. So no idea when this was bottled, no idea what the best before date is, probably should have a look. But look at that, that's pouring absolutely wonderfully. And alt beers themselves, not a style that I've had too many of, I'm not going to lie. Even though I did spend four years in Germany. How many times do I bring that up in these videos? Fucking hell. Anyway, so let's just uh, let that settle a little bit. Does it actually have any information about the beer itself? But no, you get a vibration, which is going to come up on the microphone. But yeah, it doesn't actually say. It probably says it's somewhere on the bottle itself, but I can't find it. But I'm sure of a beer like this, it's not going to be too detrimental to the overall beer if it is out of date. But again, just look at that art gorgeous stuff anyway beer in the glass then and uh, as you can see it's not jet black but it is a really dark beer a really dark sort of is that hazy yeah that's a dark hazy sort of um dulled mahogany i suppose dulled mahogany how fucking pretentious is that with about one finger's worth of a nice beige head but yeah it just looks really rich and inviting and uh, yeah, it definitely looks like what you'd expect from a bit more of a cloudy alt beer, I suppose. But yeah, it's like just like a chunk of colour, but you can see the uh, the brown bleeding through at the bottom. Looks very handsome in this glass. So let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh. The bourbon barrel is there, but it's not too intrusive. It's got like a slight meaty aroma to it. It's not like really acidic or 
tart on the nose. It's really quite rounded. Loads of fermented fruit character like berries, dates, prunes, that sort of stuff. But then there's this sort of like savoury, sort of like meaty vegetable stew character. It smells very German, if I'm going to be stereotypical. Oh, it smells so good. It really, really does. And there's like a, a musky sweetness coming through. Yeah, there's just this one distinct aroma that I just cannot put my finger on. It smells good anyway. It smells really rich and inviting. So uh, let's give it a taste. Prost. It starts off really puckering for one second, but then fizzles out. That being said, it's coming through on the back end. <sighs> Oof. Do you know what this reminds me of? You would only have Coleman's mustard. And you, I sometimes, I love like British mustard. Do you know what I mean? Like that yellow, like, but it's not really yellow. Coleman's mustard. I, I love that, like how sharp it can be. But at the same time, something like a heat from a chili. Mm. I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? I'm getting that, it does, it actually has a mustard flavour. I've got to say, not really getting the bourbon barrel too much. There's not even that sort of like vanilla character coming through. But it's very woody. It's, um, I never know what the proper word is, but I've got mineral in my head. Do you know what I mean? Loads of woody oaky tannins coming through. Yeah, and there's almost like this umami soy sauce character as well. It's a very savoury tasting beer. And I'm reminded of like a stock bovril gravy, but in a very good way. Relatively mm -hmm. light bodied without being watery. But it's satisfying. It's a little bit oily. And you get loads of flavour on your lips. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, that, that's an intriguing beer for sure. There is that sour character coming through. Sort of reminds me of that. And I mean this in the best way possible. It's just what it's reminding me of. You know, there's like really sour gobstoppers and it's it's not necessarily like a citric character but it's got that like essence or you know fake character to it but I think in the context to this beer it actually really works well and my phone keeps vibrating it's pissing me off I don't know, there's like, do you know what it kind of reminds me of? Sour Braten. Which is like a German meat dish. I think it's German. I know that it's cooked in Germany a lot, especially in Bavaria. And that's like marinated in like vinegar. There is a vinegar flavour there, almost like a slight malt vinegar character. Mm. The way I'm describing this is probably so unsatisfying. Do you know what I mean? But it's not a refreshing beer. It's not a crisp beer. It's not an easy drinking beer. There's a little bit of like a whiskey-like warmth coming up on the back end as it's going down into the pit of your stomach. But it works so well. It's very satisfying. If you like savoury tasting beers... And a sourness that is there, but it's got that vinegary, almost like Holman's, Coleman's mustard vinegar character. Then you're going to really enjoy this. You know, it's reminded me of like freshly baked gammon on rye bread with a bit of Coleman's mustard. Mm. And I think that would accompany this beautifully. 
there are flavours in there that I just am detecting but cannot put my finger on. That's a very robust taste in beer. Definitely not for everyone. I could imagine some people having one sip of this and just thinking, fuck that, and not drinking that. But I like beers like this that do give you a bit of a challenge, that do break away from being like a really multi sweet stout or then a really hoppy IPA or like a really puckering goes beer or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And I'm definitely getting the, the musky malt character of an alt beer in there. But yeah, it's a small sip beer for sure. Um, I can imagine this might actually taste a little bit more satisfying as it warms up. As it stands, it's pretty much out the fridge. I just needed a beer, even though I do have a can of Frank the Tank in there, which is, probably would have been a better beer, uh, because I can imagine this is going to affect my palate a little bit. Going back to what it reminds me of. <laughs> You know, uh, is it Tyrrell's or Tyrell's, that British crisp flavour? You know a really vinegar-forward salt and vinegar crisps? Like kettle chips. That's what it's reminding me of. I think I've hit the nail on the head. This is salt and vinegar kettle chips in a beer. But a lot more complex and a lot more robust and refined. Those words probably shouldn't be all bunched together in one sentence, but hey, I'm a pretentious prick and I own it, so uh, sit on it. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's like very slight arrogance about this beer, which I quite like. But it's definitely intriguing. And uh, Paul, Pierre Brew News, I think this is this just screams of you. And I think James from Rampant Line Beer Reviews would enjoy this one as well, especially with the whole German connection. But yeah, I don't get to drink many uh, Crooked Stave beers. Um, I've got one more which came in the Mikula Beer Club box. I can't remember what it was. I think it was either it was either an IPA or a a blonde stout. Yeah, it's like a lemon meringue blonde stout or something like that. But yeah, this is really intriguing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's quite hard to rate. See, it's rarely appealing to me because it is something a little bit different, but it still is palatable. But at 10 to 3 in the morning, probably not the best beer to drink because uh, you may get a little bit of acid reflux when it comes to uh, about 7 o'clock. But yeah, I really like that. Um, it, I didn't know what to expect with this beer. So pre preconceptions were just completely out the window. So it's it's neither disappointed me nor has it thrived. Do you know what I mean? Um, but as a beer, lovely stuff, something a little bit different, and uh, it's you know it's Crooked Stave, you know, really highly regarded brewery that we don't really see too much. And uh, say what you want about Brewery Dog, some of the guest beers that they get in in terms of international breweries is just it's still fantastic so um yeah if you've ever wanted a beer that tastes like either uh, kettle chips or tyrell's salt and vinegar then this is the beer for you definitely a beer to share probably should have saved this for a bottle share but i don't care i, I just wanted it and it's been in the fridge for a little while so in terms of a rating then um i'm gonna give that one Gonna give it an eight and a half out of ten. Um, I'd I'd happily have that. One of the things that's taken points away is bourbon barrel aged. You're not really getting that at all. But then again, I don't know if a really strong bourbon barrel character would work with the beer. It probably would. It probably take it to another level, or it just might make it just a bit too, a bit too left field. But uh, yeah, I'm. I'm very happy with that. Glad that I picked it up. Plus I get some absolutely stellar artwork there as well. So if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Uh, go check out Crooked Stave. Um, I want to get more of their beers because they seem to do a lot of intriguing styles like this. And I'm all for that every now and then. So uh, yeah, 
eight and a half out of ten. If you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions. Check out Crooked Stave. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Comments would be greatly appreciated. And now I'm probably going to watch the rest of Chernobyl. Or just crash out after I've drank it. Who knows? The night's still young. Kind of, but not really. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, you all take care. Cheers.